OK, well then I'll start here. Number one. We're going to simplify the square root of 75. And the best way to do this, if you have no idea, of course, the easiest way, the easiest way to do this is if you already know that 75 is 25 times 3, that makes it really easy and fast. But what if you don't know? So, I love making factor trees. These come from way back in pre-algebra that you were doing this, even before then, to factor numbers. All right, so I know that a five goes into 75 because there's a five at the end. So if I divide 75 by five, I need a calculator. Actually, I don't really need a calculator, I don't guess, but let's just do it. Se mm -hmm. 75 divided by 5 is 15. So 75 is 5 times 15. And 15 is 3 times 5. So 75 equals 5 times 5 times 3, which is 5 squared times 3. And anything squared is a perfect square. So you can write the square root of 75 as the square root of 5 squared times 3, which would be the square root of 5 squared times the square root of 3, and the square root of 5 squared is 5. So 5 times the square root of 3. That would be if you don't know that 75 is 25 times 3. So either way will work. but I've actually found these ways usually faster than having to do any kind of tricks on the calculator. On the other hand, these, number two. Number two is not that easy. We've got four times the square root of 108 plus eight times the square root of 48. Now, I honestly do know how to break down 48, but I don't really know how to break down 108. So this is gonna be an adventure. Now we can use a calculator or we can use a factor tool. And the factor tool, the great thing about the factor tool is you don't need to know a lot. It's enough if you recognize that 108 is an even number, which means two will go evenly into it. So you see, you can do these with any kind of calculator. It doesn't need to be a fancy calculator. 108 divided by two is 54. Well, that's an even number. 54 is an even number. Two will not break down. It only breaks down into one times two. So 54 will break down. Let's see, 54 divided by two. As long as two works, let's do it. 54 is two times 27. Now, if you know that there's a perfect square in 27, you're pretty close to being done. 
but if you don't know, you discover quickly that two will not go evenly into 27, so you, you switch to three. Twenty seven is nine times three. And by now you probably know that nine is three times three. So what I see here is that one oh eight equals two times two times three times three times three. The numbers that are at the end of the branches, they're like fruit. They're at the ends of the branches. All right, so two times two. Well, let's just write it out. Two times two times three times three times three. And here we have a perfect square, two squared. And here we have a perfect square, three squared, and then there's one little lonely three. Now, if you don't already know what 108 is, that's a pretty good way to do it. Let me take a few sips of my coffee. Now it is true that two squared times three squared, four times nine is 36, and that's a perfect square. But there's no reason to complicate this. Four times the square root of two squared times three squared times three. The reason I didn't make that three to the third, I could have, but I need square roots. I, I need perfect squares so I can take the square roots of them. Okay, so we'll leave this this way for a minute, move on to that. 48. Well, you could say it equals four times 12 if you happen to know that, or three times 16, if you happen to know that. But if you don't know it, I'm, I'm talking about what if, what if there's a student who just doesn't know anything except 48's an even number. That really helps if you start by dividing at two. And this recording, remember, is gonna be listened to by a lot of different people. Now, did I really record? Yes, I did. Okay, so if I divide 48 by two, I'll get two times 24. 24 is an even number. So if I divide 24 by two, I get 12. So 24 equals two times 12. Now. When we get down to 12, I know that that's two times six, and that six is two times three. So what do we have here? We have two times two times two times two times three. Okay, so as for perfect squares, well, let's write this out first. That would give me two squared times two squared times three. It is true that two squared times two squared is also a perfect square at 16, but again, Let's do this for people who don't feel really comfortable with this whole exponent under a radical thing. Let's just stick to the minimum amount of knowledge. Two squared times two squared times three. 
OK, now we're ready to go forth and conquer. 4 times the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 3 plus 8 times the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 3. What will that give me? That will give me 4 times the square root of 2 squared is 2. The square root of 3 squared is 3. And the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. Plus 8 times the square root of 2 squared, which is 2, times the square... It is so easy to do that. Don't do that. I say that and my cat starts running. Times two times the square root of three. Okay, once you take a square root, you're not still gonna have a square root sign. So four times two is eight times three. Eight times three is 24 times the square root of three, plus eight times two is 16, times two is 32. You can always put that in your calculator. Times the square root of three. N notice now that our radicals have, they're both square roots and they both have exactly the same number th under the radical. That is, they have exactly the same radicand. That means they're like radicals, and that means we can add 24 square roots of 3 to 32 square roots of 3, and we end up with 24 plus 32 times the square root of 3. Now that you're masters of factoring, you can notice that you have a GCF here. This is absolutely the easiest way to add. We're going to have 24 plus 32 times the square root of 3. We usually put square roots at the end. 24 plus 32 is going to be 4 times 2, 4 plus 2 is 6, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So I get the square. 56 times the square root of 3. Now, the more knowledge you bring with you, the less time it takes. OK, if you already know that this is 3 times 16 and the square root of 16 is 4, then you'll like take one step to figure out that this is going to be 32 times the square root of 3. So the amount of knowledge you bring with you from the past helps to increase your ac accuracy and your speed when you're doing math, unless you get overconfident, which can just totally do you in. I know. Any questions about this? Okay. We did three and four yesterday, and they're in the sheets behind. Let's do this. Plumbers use the Pythagorean theorem. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Plumbers use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate pipe length. If a pipe is to be offset as shown, <clears throat> The travel or length of the pipe is calculated using the lengths of the advance and the offset. In other words, 
advance squared plus offset squared equals travel squared. Or if you prefer, a plus a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's see. Um, find the travel, it, find the travel right here. If the offset is 15.75 inches, and the advance is 14.25 inches squared. And so we're looking for the travel. And since that's the slanted side right across from the right angle, I'm gonna call it C. I don't wanna to have to keep writing travel. Okay, so definitely a calculator problem. We're going to have 14.25 squared plus 15.75 squared. Find out what that is. 451.125, that's going to equal C squared. And so C is going to equal the square root of 451.125. Okay, so it says, now you always read underneath because that will tell you how to answer. Round to the nearest thousandth. That's three decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to take the calculator and find out what the square root <coughs> of 451.125 is. Second x squared, 451 plus 125, enter. So I have to round to three decimal places, but look at this. Um, notice that the fifth decimal place is zero. So I'm going to write down four decimal places initially. All right, now we're supposed to round to three decimal places. Here's the third decimal place, one, two, three. Here's the fourth decimal place. This determines whether the nine moves up to a 10. And then you carry the one and the three plus one is four. Or a better way to think of it is this determines whether or not 39 moves up to 40. And since seven is a number bigger than five, or five or bigger, it is going to cause 39 to move up to 40. So our answer is going to be 21.240. And while probably my math lab would count this right if you answered 21.24, if any of you have taken a science class, then you know that you have to keep that third decimal place even though it's a zero, because that shows the accuracy of your measurement. So 
So either one is going to be correct. I would go for this though. If it says round to three decimal places, by golly, I am going to have one, two, three decimal places, and that's that. Okay, so what did we do here? We recognized that this is a, b, c, a right triangle. And I know that a, squ a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, because it's a word problem, I went ahead and used words, but I didn't need to do that. And indeed, I got tired of writing travel. Changed it to C. Because the slanted side across from the right angle is always C in your A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Stop me if you have any questions. Just shout it out. Now, here we go. My favorite kind of puzzle. Describe how the graph of the function g of x equals negative one third the square root of x can be obtained from the basic graph. Then graph the function but notice it gives you pictures to choose from. I love transformations. Um, they're annoying, and at the same time, they're totally mind games. Okay. So before I even look at this, I'm going to translate this. This is the basic graph. I mean, the basic function. This is a fraction. You've got two choices for this. It's either the vertical stretch or the vertical shrink. If it's a fraction, it's smaller than one. So fractions like that are vertical shrinks. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a vert shrink. And a minus sign in front means that the graph is going to be reflected across the x-axis, which means turned upside down, flipped upside down. But it's called a reflection. Across the x-axis, there are other kinds of reflections. Okay, so, Here's where we answer. Normally, these would be answer boxes. Start with the graph of f of x equals the square root of x. Then, hmm, by multiplying each hmm coordinate by hmm. Well, that's not really clear. But, the only time that we talk in this class about multiplying a coordinate by a number is when we're talking about the vertical stretch or the vertical shrink. 
So when you when you do this on my math lab, you'll actually get a drop down box with. But then. Shrink. Vertically shrink. Is what would be the right answer here because of that one third. Vertically shrink by multiplying each Y coordinate. The Y coordinates are the only ones we ever talk about multiplying by a number. Now, when you get to a more advanced class, they'll talk about what happens with the, the horizontal shrink and stretch, but that's really complicated. So we're just sticking to vertical when it comes to shrinking. I hope. I hope we're doing that. Um, now, OK, by. So shrink by multiplying each Y coordinate by. That number one third, not negative one third. But just one third. The negative sign has a completely separate job. The negative sign reflects across the X axis. The negative sign in front. It's not part of the change, the transformation caused by the one third. I know that can be very, very confusing, but adapt and survive. OK, now your best bet is to graph this on the graphing calculator, but. Your second best bet. Is to memorize. That Y equals the square root of X. Looks like that. Now we are. We are what? We are shrinking this graph. We're actually shrinking it more than that. And then we are flipping it across the x-axis. I really needed to. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and erase that. Come on, be nice to me. Thank you. Oh well. The world's tiny, 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 like it. So whatever one <clears throat> looks like this is going to be the answer. And that'll be A. And if you remember, um, there's a sheet from one of the previous. I need to put that up, up in 12, don't I? I will right after this. I'm even going to write it down. Upload. Where should I write it down? I'll write it here. Upload. Uh, the basic function graphs. The BFGs. Kind of like BFF. Well, this is BFGs, the basic function graphs. Just so you'll have it. OK, and here are the answers that are in the drop down boxes. OK, let's 
go here. We did this, but I want to talk about this for one minute. This is an X. This is the graph of an exponential function. It's had stuff done to it because if this were in its home position, it would be uh, crossing the X axis right there. If that's one, because it crosses the X axis at one, maybe these are two. I don't know. Anyway, the shape though is definitely the shape of an exponential function. And pretty soon we're going to be living in the world of exponential and logarithmic functions. And that's how we're going to finish out the semester. So this is your first official introduction. It's really important that exponential functions are one to one. Why? Ah, later. Okay, now we're going to find inverse functions. Um, yes, it's one to one. Why? Because this is a straight line. It's a slanted line that rises like that. Of course, it's one to one. What else would it be? Draw a horizontal line, a horizontal line, a horizontal line. These horizontal lines, no matter where you draw them along the line, are only going to intersect the green line at one point. That's the horizontal line test. It means that this is a one, that's a one, believe it or not, a one-to-one -one function. One-to-one -one funk. How about that? Better be careful how I spell that. Um, so f of x equals 5x minus 6. Step 1, change the f of x to y. y equals 5x minus 6. 2, the strangest step in the universe, in all of mathematics. Switch your x and your y x equals 5y minus 6. Now, step 3 can be short or long. That's where you solve for y. Solve for y. Step 2 was switch. X and Y. And step one is change F of X to Y, but I don't have room to write it. All right, so here we go. First thing I'm going to do is add six to both sides. So I'll have X plus six equals five Y. Then I divide by five and I divide by five. So I looked in the answer in my math lab and it seems to be just fine with them. If that's your answer, because once you have Y equals, you have, you have that, F inverse of X. So you write X plus six all over five. Or you can be fancy about it and write it like a straight line. One fifth X plus six over five. If you were writing it as a straight line, that's how you'd write it. Either way is okay. Okay, again, you're going to stop me if you have questions. Okay, in this class, in the college algebra part of the class,
we are really big on wanting you to find the inverses of square root, cube root, fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, seventh root, those kind of problems. So we're going to have f of x equals the cube root of x minus 8 and y equals the cube root of x minus 8 and x equals the cube root of y minus 8. Now y and minus 8 are trapped under that radical, so I'm going to have to cube both sides in order to liberate the y. Oh, okay. Well, you see, I was going to try to get away without without proving to you that it's true, because I've done it before, but what the heck, let's do it. This is equivalent to the radicand, y minus 8, to that power divided by that power. They're the same exact thing. And 3 over 3 is 1, or you can think of it as they cancel out. Leaving you with y minus 8. So if you want to show all the steps, if you feel more comfortable doing that, that's great, but you don't have to. All right, solve for y. All I have to do now is add 8 to both sides of the equation. Oops. So I'll have y equals x to the third x cubed over no somebody stop me before I kill again. That's a famous line in a, an old, old movie. Stop me before I kill again. I forget what the movie is. Maybe the Boston Strangler or something. Um, not important here. Okay. X to the third plus eight. There you go. So that's what F inverse of X is going to be. So now you need to find X to the third plus eight, doggone. And so B is going to be your answer. Okay, we did this yesterday. So it's on the video in the notes. And how to decide on the graph. Oh, now, now, now. Here we go. My cat is trying to kill something. I hate that. Okay, here we go. You have a negative underneath the square root. That means you have been drop kicked, kaboom, into the complex number system. Negative one. Actually, I skipped a step, which probably by now is okay, but might not be. Come on. There. All right. The square root of negative 
one times 28 equals the square root of negative one times the square root of 28. But 28 can be broken down. Yes, it can. It's got a perfect square in it. So 28, you can do this with a factor tree, or you can know that 28 is four times seven. So this is going to be, this is I. I times the square root of four times the square root of seven. And the square root of four is two. So two I times the square root of seven. A lot of the time that's good enough and you could put that in the answer box. But here they're telling you, type your answer in the form A plus B I. So it's not good enough for this particular answer. Okay, so in order to have A plus B and then I at the end, well, the numbers that go with I, these two, both of these numbers multiply the I. So, two times the square root of seven I is on the outside, not the inside of the radical ever. Now, we don't have a separate A, a number, so what you do is you put a zero. So this is zero plus two times the square root of seven times I. Okay. Now, here we're just going to square. Most of it is just handling this like you would when you square any binomial. <clears throat> Almost put an X in there. I don't want that. All right, so now, eight times eight, eight times nine I. I'm gonna have to rescue that creature. Nine I times eight, nine I times nine I. Okay, this is going to give us, if I can concentrate, eight times eight is 64, plus eight times nine I is 72 I, plus nine I times eight is 72 I, plus nine I times nine I is 81 I squared. So this is going to be 64 plus 144i plus 81 times negative 1. So that will give me 64 minus 81 plus 144 I. So uh, sixty four minus eighty one is negative seventeen. So negative seventeen plus one forty four I.
see your answer is kind of automatically in A plus BI form, but if for some reason it were not, um, you need to put it in A plus BI form. Okay. Okay. Here we're going to solve a quadratic equation that doesn't have the X term. That means we're going to use the square root principle. Yeah. Okay. 4X squared what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add 28 to both sides. Then I divide by 4 because 4 is not inside parentheses with the X. That will give me X squared equals Seven. Then I take the square root of each side, the square root of x squared, plus or minus the square root of seven. And so, x equals plus or minus the square root of seven. Let's see how to answer this. says use a comma to separate answers as needed. So I'm going to guess that what they want here is negative the square root of seven comma positive the square root of seven. And remember what's a dash here is really your blue answer box in my math lab. Okay, these can be hard to get used to. Now, number 15, let's see if we did that. I don't think we did. We did 16, not 15. So here, let's do number 15. Ah, and this is gonna be a U substitution. We've got x to the fourth plus 2x squared equals 15. Subtract 15 from both sides. We have x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 15 equals 0. u equals x squared, u squared equals x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. So I substitute u squared plus 2u minus 15 equals 0. Now I have a quadratic temporarily. I can solve for u and then resubstitute for x squared and then x. So I'll have u, u plus 5 minus 3. Yes. So u plus 5 equals 0, and u minus 3 equals 0. So u equals negative 5. And 
and u equals positive 3. Uh-huh, okay. All right, now we have to re-substitute. We have u equals negative 5 and u equals positive 3. u equals x squared, so x squared equals negative 5, and x squared equals 3. So I take the square root of both sides, the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5, and the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So x equals plus or minus i times the square root of 5, and x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. The only thing is they've written it like this over here on C. Right. Here, this is designed to confuse you. This is the correct one. Because the I goes with the 5, because we had U equals negative 5, then X squared equals negative 5. So they do want the I behind, so I can do that. No problem. I can go with C plus or minus the square root of 3, comma, plus or minus the square root of 5, i. i is not under the square root. Now let's make absolutely sure. Yes. So let me write it their way. plus or minus the square root of 3. So these would be uh, partial credit, this would be full credit, this would be partial credit, and maybe, maybe I would be willing to give some points for this. Probably would. But I'd have to think about exactly how much. Okay, C work at end. We did this one. Let's do the word problems. That's a great way to spend our study time together. Find the dimensions of a Persian rug whose perimeter is 28 feet and whose area is 45 square feet. So, Perimeter equals 28, area equals 45. We have a rectangular carpet. And width. So, the perimeter is the length around the outside, so it's the length plus the width plus the length plus the width. So, 28 equals 2L 
plus 2w, and the area equals length times width. So 45 equals length times width. This is such a common problem in algebra where you have to use two formulas to solve a problem, but we can do this. I am going, to, well, I have to use one equation to solve for one of the variables. So, I mean, if I use this equation, I'll have a fraction, right? If I solve for L, I'll get 45 over W. If I solve for W, I'll get 45 over L. I really don't want to have fractions. I mean, I could, but I'd rather not. So, instead of that, here's what I'm going to do. 28 equals, I'm going to pull a GCF out of these two terms. Then divide by 2 and divide by 2. So I get 14 equals L plus W. Now it's just a matter of which letter I like best because I have to solve for both of them. All right, I'm going to solve for L for no other reason than that I want to. Divide by W. <laughs> divide by, subtract W, subtract W. Okay, I fear my cat has already made a kill. If I hadn't been on the video, I would have jumped up and rescued whatever life form she has endangered. Oh, and that has happened. Not <laughs> in the night, but but in the daytime. When I decided I wanted to nap and I pulled back the covers and there was a dead bird. Oh, it was horrible. I was no longer sleepy. And they said they're all so proud that they gave you it. They get all miffed when you throw it away. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I even had one cat move out and never come back. Not not um not George, but a, a black cat, a black fluffy cat who lived here for a while. He was a stray. He came by, decided he liked it. Um, when I when I stole his uh, uh, squirrel, it was a squirrel. It was a dead squirrel. He ran out the cat door and has never been back. I mean, who would have guessed that love is that easy to lose? Oh well, back to math. So here we are, here's where we are right now. I used this equation to solve for L. Then I took 14 minus W and I put it in for the L right there in 45 equals L times W. So I've got 14 times W, 14 minus W times W, which gives me 45 equals 14 W minus W squared. Okay, now the question is, yeah, they're just asking for length and width. They're not asking us to maximize or minimize or anything like that. So in order to make life easier for me and probably you, I'm going to move these two terms over to the other side because in doing that, I will get a, a positive W squared. 
and minus 14W. Minus 14W. So what I have over here now is, let's come down here, 40, uh, W squared minus 14W plus 45 equals zero. Let me make sure I wrote it correctly. Yes, minus 14W from both sides plus W squared from both sides. It just makes life a little easier. 45 equals five times nine, but it's positive. So it also equals negative five times negative nine. And 45 equals negative five plus negative nine, which is negative 14. The middle term, the middle, the B number. Why am I writing 15? 14, doggone it. All right, so boom, 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 boom equals zero. Going to have minus five and minus nine. W minus five, W minus nine. W minus five equals zero. W minus nine equals zero. Add five to both sides, you get W equals five. Add nine to both sides, you get W equals nine. And so, if W equals five, then L equals 14 minus W, so 14 minus 5, so L equals 9. Over here, if W equals 9, then L equals 14 minus 9, so L equals 5. The length has to be longer than the width, that's why it's called the length. So we have to go with L equals nine and W equals five. So up here, the longer side is nine feet. Oh, they have the feet there, so I don't have to write it. And the shorter side is five feet. So that's how we do that. We have to use perimeter and area in order to solve for one of the variables and put it in the other. Okay, now we have four minutes, I think. Have you chewed up your poor little animal? Oh. <sighs> okay. A toy rocket is shot vertically into the air from a launching pad nine feet above the ground. So, boom, crash. Here's the formula. How long will it take the rocket? How long means time. How long will it take the rocket to reach its maximum height? That's going to be feet. Okay, otherwise known as H of T. But what we want is the maximum height and the time it takes 
to get to the maximum height. Well, T is acting like X. So T is what we're going to use to find negative B over 2A. And then the maximum anything is going to be what you get when you take that number, whatever it is, and put it in for all of the T's or all of the X kind of numbers. So first we're going to find T and that's going to be the rocket reaches its height at this many seconds. So this is going to be negative B over 2A. And this is going to be um, the max height. Is going to be negative 16 times whatever that is squared. So I'll, I'll just leave it for now. Negative B over 2A is negative 160 over 2 times negative 16. I think we did this. Doesn't matter, we'll do it again. equals negative 160 over negative 32. And I think I know that's five. So I'm going to write five seconds, but I am going to put it in the calculator to make sure. Negative 160 divided by negative 32 is five, yeah. All right, let's get rid of the word max. It's going to take five seconds for um, the object, the toy rocket, to reach its maximum height. So what we need to do now, I'm gonna put it down here, the max height is going to be negative 16 times five squared plus 160 times five plus nine. All right, so we'll put that in the calculator. negative 16 times five squared plus 160 times five plus nine. It's 409. Let me make sure I did that right. Negative 16 times five squared plus 160, yes, times five plus nine, yes. Do you want me to go on? I don't think I can, really. So why don't you mention something that you would like for me to go over? As I scroll through this, stop me when um, I, I run through something you would like me to go over. This one we did. Ah, and 
that's all there is. So we haven't gotten to the really hard part of this yet. But that will start next week. However, tomorrow we're just going to talk about synthetic division, which is ridiculously easy. However, the use we're going to put it to will not be ridiculously easy. But if you go step by step, it is. So don't worry about it yet. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good Thank luck. You. Good luck on your test. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you guys are going to make A's. We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> Have a good day. Good day to you too. Hi. Hi. Bye-bye.